Hello, welcome everyone. I'm John and welcome back to our channel and the start of a brand new year and a revitalised host. Uh, I hope you've had a lovely festive break. Um, now, as this is the first show of 2022, today is going to be uh, a bit different from our usual paint along webinars. Uh, but before we go and say hello to Marvin, who's joining us live from Singapore, I first want to give a shout out to some of our new patrons who joined our Arti community over the last few weeks. So we say hello to Barbara Smith, uh, Shari Grant, Sandra Donofrio, uh, Alex Sullivan, Karen Murphy, Edward Fine and Joanne and Jan Adams, Mary Rogan, Lainey Dalzell and Maynak Goswami. So thank you so much for your support and I know you're going to enjoy our upcoming live events. Now, as I've already said, today is going to be a bit different. Uh, there's no paint along event, so you can leave all your paint brushes and paints to one side. Although Marvin is going to be sharing with you one of his favorite art tips that he learned from a renowned US painter. Uh, a little bit more about that later. In addition, I'm going to run through the new format for our channel in 2022, as well as some new types of shows that we're going to be broadcasting. I'm going to talk about our amazing African project and how close we are to connecting a school with permanent broadband internet so that we can help introduce them to the creative world of watercolour art. Uh, we'll also discuss our upcoming two to three hour workshop webinar with Marvin that's taking place this coming Thursday. And we're going to launch a very special hot ticket as well. As mentioned, Marvin will also discuss a great art technique for helping you with your watercolour painting, so I can't wait for that. So first, let me talk a bit about SKA 2022 and what you can look forward to at Shopkeep Arty over the next 12 months. Our live Tuesday one hour art classes will now be held exclusively for our patrons and paying guests. There's going to be less talk from me. I'm going to I'm going to try anyway to, to talk less and more focus on the artist and their art. And with less people on the live broadcast, I should be able to get all your questions answered. Sometimes that's been a little bit of a struggle when we've had uh, so many hundreds attending. If you're not one of our patrons, don't worry, we will make these recorded shows available on YouTube, but only after the live event, probably on a Wednesday. If you want to join all of these live shows, though, throughout the month, the best value option is to become one of our patrons for as little as £5, or that equates to about $6 a month. Uh, about the price of a large coffee with a with a shot of caramel. Um, we're also going to be broadcasting some very different live shows for patrons that won't be aired on YouTube. Uh, we hope these will make you a more rounded artist, um, such as focusing specifically on art materials. Um, early February, for example, we're holding one all about brushes, um, but we've got loads of these planned throughout the year. Uh, paper, paints, palettes, the list goes on. But over time, these should help provide you with great information so that you can make the right choices and turn a good painting into a great painting. Uh, something that we've heard a lot from our professionals over the years, um, the materials that you use can really make a big difference. We're also going to be taking a journey together with certain artists throughout the year, supporting them with marketing and business development. Sounds a bit weird, but um, we're, we're actually going to be coming up with ideas for increasing their sales and exposure to new audiences. These shows will basically become known as a, a almost like an incubator uh, for accelerating an artist's brand. And you can be part of that journey where we hope you'll learn loads of new tips and tricks for monetizing the art that you love 
to create. So it's very different, um, but we've got some really interesting ideas, but we really want you to be part of that journey. And our first show to do with this will be next week when we're going to be embarking on a journey with Graham Booth uh, in Northern Ireland. So that'll be a fascinating one. We're, we're kind of working it out as we go along, but we think uh, we've got some good ideas on the horizon for that. Again, all these shows will be exclusive for our patrons, so if you do want to join in and get the most from our channel, be sure to check out the links in the description below and pick the level that's right for you. Each patron level also comes with an increasing number of money and time-saving perks, so make sure you read the options carefully. And while we're on the subject of patron levels, our highest levels, five and six, also automatically support our African art project. So in addition to accessing our entire video library, as well as gaining access to discounted workshops, we also donate a big proportion of your membership towards our Arty Up project. This is the first charitable project of its kind where we're raising enough money to connect a selected school in Kenya, in Africa, with permanent broadband internet and then we're going to be supplying them with a computer, a projector and art materials for all their pupils and then their pupils will join in some of our art, live art tutorials throughout the year. The first class we hold will be specifically for them with guest professional artists as well as all those supporters that have contributed to make this happen. It'll be great fun. We've also raised uh, over 30%, I think, last time I looked. And if you want to find out more about it, uh, please see the video just here. And, um, and in this video, I speak to uh, some of the teachers and the pupils and um, various people at the school uh, that we've identified in uh, Kasumu County in Kenya. Really, really excited about it. So that's a quick snapshot of what you can look forward to throughout 2022. Obviously, we'll continue to host professional artists from around the world in paint along webinars, everything that you've got used to. Uh, but those are just some of the uh, additional benefits that we'll be doing with our patrons this year. Um, and hopefully you'll really be able to benefit from all the different insights and techniques that we're bringing to you through our channel. Um, the first of which will obviously be Marvin Chu this coming Thursday. So let's say hello to Marvin now. Um, hi, Marvin. How are you? Hi, John. I'm good. Good. Have you had a good Christmas and a new year? Yeah, yeah. Usually I just stay at home, didn't do any countdown. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, now, are you in your studio here or are you at home? Yeah, this is my studio. As you can see, uh, there's a few paintings on the wall. Yeah, it looks yeah. lovely. As well. Yeah, great. And um, so now obviously we've got this two to three hour workshop event that's coming up this Thursday. What mm -hmm. what have you got planned for that? Um, so I think you can see the reference photo um, on the website. Yeah. Um, and I've done a couple of, uh, in fact, I think we did this. What, that was in the similar. short class we did a few months ago, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's on, it's from the same area in, in the UK. Uh, it's called Swartz. It's Burford, if I, if I remember the name correctly. Um, so what I did uh, this morning is to prepare um, this um, sketches. So uh, bring it up closer to my camera, as you can see. Yes. This one is um, done with a 2B pencil. Um, so effectively, um, the, the composition is basically similar to the, the photograph. So whenever I, I take a photo, I already start composing it, framing it um, with the camera. But when it comes to preparing thumbnail sketch like this, uh, I'll use the white of the paper as the first tone already. So this is the brightest tone, the lightest, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the white of the paper, and then a very light shading throughout here. These are all the mid tones. Okay, and then you can see those that are really dark. So th those are the darkest dark that I press slightly uh, harder when I, when I do all this. So those are the darkest dark. So essentially there's just three layers of uh, tones in this sketch, lightest, 
mid-tone and the darks. So then I use what I've done here, use this information, and then did a quick color study. So this is basically, uh, sometimes I will do uh, one, or sometimes I may do up to two to three, and just to test out different color combination. And this is fairly similar to the photograph, although I remember in the photo, the sky is quite dark, quite, it's a cloudy, dark sky. So no, cloudy, it. cloudy and overcast in the UK. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so I change it to a bit of a blue sky here. So I know you only get like four days of blue sky. Yes, the exactly. <laughs> so I, I thought having a blue sky will give a better contrast to the earthy tone colors of, of the houses. So that's a bit of the changes that I made. So uh, yeah, basically do, 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 um, I'll do two sketches, one in pencil and then one in color. And then- That's, that's uh, great. And, and Marvin's going to what's... be sending me the photo of that so that we can, we can put that up on the, um, the information page on our website about this mm -hmm. workshop. So you'll be, and we'll send the images for the reference photo, obviously the, uh, the tonal study and the value studies that he's just shown you. And we'll send those through to you the day before so that you right. can then prepare. Now, um, Marvin, for the workshop, will you be, will we be, you'll be taking them through the sketch first of all, and, and taking them through step by step on that, because obviously we've got quite a bit of time. So we'll be able to do that as well, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So, so we will, I will start from scratch on a, on a quarter sheets, uh, blank watercolor paper. Mm -hmm. um, and when I, if you attended the previous workshop, it will be similar. So I will start from scratch. I'll explain a little bit on the perspective and, and um, you know, proportions as well. Um, and we will work on towards uh, the first layer, second layer, and, and so on and so forth. And I will, I will paint um, in, in steps so that you can follow me. Oh, um, but um, from the previous uh, workshop, I remember some some people are are having were having problem catching up because well, although it's just three hours long, sometimes I still need to uh, complete certain uh, washes or certain brush strokes before the whole thing dries up. Otherwise, it will become a second layer. Then it, then that's how watercolor works. You have to paint it while it is still wet. So. I will have to apologize in advance if any one of you couldn't, you know, can't catch up with me because I just have to do it while it is still wet. Yeah, yeah well, I, I, they're, they're aware of that and we, we'll obviously do. But once you've done that necessary part, we can then just take mm -hmm. a pause yeah. while people catch up if That's they need to. Right. Um, and obviously the reason for sending you through those tonal studies and everything in advance is that if you want to do any prep work, if you feel more comfortable sketching out beforehand or whatever, then you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, and obviously all the materials are listed on that page on our website as well. Um, no, that's great. I can't wait for that workshop. It'll be a, it's a great workshop to start the year off with. So really looking forward to that, even if it is in the, the overcast, dreary UK. But um, the yeah, you can't beat the architecture. It's, it's very quintessentially English. So that's going to be a brilliant workshop. And if you want to join us, we've got a special hot ticket that gives you an amazing 20% off the price of a ticket. If you're a patron, you can access the hot ticket simply by visiting our live event section of our website, shopkeeparty.com, uh, and then you can click on the patron discount link. You can also find uh, our live events link in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, the good news is that whether you're a patron or not, but if you're joining us for this live event, you too have the opportunity of purchasing that hot ticket. And I'm going to now just paste the link to that in the chat. So you should see that in the chat now. And um, you can just click that link and you can take advantage of that 20% discount. So I mentioned at the start that Marvin had a great art tip to share with you. So um, maybe you can just tell us a little bit of the background of this art tip. How, how did you find out about it, Marvin? All right. Um, it was back in, well, long time ago, 2010, I believe. I was uh, in Los Angeles attending a, a live demo, in-person demo, some sort of like a mini workshop. 
uh, with the National Watercolor Society. And um, the instructor on that day uh, is Mr. John Solomonen. I'm sure some of you has, you know, have heard of him before. He's quite well known in the watercolor war. Um, so um, if you're familiar with uh, Mr. Solomonen's work, it's he does uh, urban scapes, city street scenes, um, like what I do, but in an entirely different way, in entirely different style. So what he does is he, he does large washes and sometimes he would do lifting to, to create some textures and details by lifting off the uh, watercolor paint. And if you've been painting watercolor, you know how hard it is to lift off some colors, especially those colors, uh, those staining colors. So what I'm going to show you now is how to do lifting with a special tool. So I got help from this guys. <laughs> so and, and they're not they're not sugar cubes. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not for coffee. So it comes in a pack like this. Um, I was talking to John just now. I, I think you can get it from Amazon. Um, yeah, and they're uh, called got, magic uh, erasers in uh, or magic sponges, magic sponges. Yeah. The, the 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 official name is called melamine sponge, M E L A, M I N E, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if you're in, if you happen to be in Asia or in in, in Japan, look out for this brand. It's like a convenience store, and everything in this store in, in Singapore cost two dollars so this pack is two dollars there, there are 30 of them in a pack so what I'm gonna do is try to lift off some of the colors uh, this is a wash of um, ultramarine blue and um, as you know ultramarine blue is not really a staining colors so I choose this color so that I'm sorry about the hunting of the yeah. Yeah, the camera keeps uh, jerking backwards and forwards. I'm not quite sure why that is, but um, yeah, we'll sort that Maybe out for Thursday. If I can move it nearer. Okay, never mind. So what I'm going to show you now is how to lift off a dried up watercolor wash like this. Usually, you use an old brush and then try to scrub it off like this, right? And you you have to you know scrub it repeatedly and then keep on doing it for hours on end and then <laughs> you issue and try to wipe it off and that's what you get. If I place it closer, you not, notice that you still got that light blue stain on the paper and it's almost impossible to get rid of. But with this um, magic sponge or melamine sponge, because it is quite soft, and then it, it, if you can see, it's really concentrated, the, the, the material. And, yeah. So what you can do is just dip it in a bowl of water like this. And I'll do it next to this bit here oh wow and I don't too much force that's incredible you can see the difference yeah yeah all right so um for mr salmonen what he does is he will use masking tape and if you want for example if this is a background of a street scene or whatever and you want to have uh, maybe a an electrical pole or somewhere or, or a lamp pole somewhere you can just use a use the masking tape tape one side like this and, and tap the width of the line of the pole that you want maybe this is a lamp post and then with the masking make sure that you we press it down a little and then just scrub it off like this and then dry it with a piece of tissue paper. Usually I'll let it dry naturally and let it dry up, but 
you can just peel it off once it's dried up and voila you get a very nice that is great isn't it yeah iron. yeah Perfect. okay and what he does sometimes as well is he will i remember he used a masking a larger piece like this and if you want a, maybe a, a, a negative shape of a, something maybe you put the tap there and use a you can use an exacto knife or pen knife and try to cut out the shape that you want just be very careful that you don't press too hard and then you might cut off your watercolor paper yeah, you don't want to cut through and uh, just cut off a diamond shape like this okay yeah and then do the same thing then you will just peel it off and you'll get that negative shape of a diamond yeah brilliant okay so this is the lifting technique using a uh, magic sponge all right brilliant. well that is such an effective such an effective thing and i can i can think already all the different applications that you could possibly do that because you can then keep it's very nice to do a good backwash but if you're wanting to lift certain things out sometimes people are using yeah. masking or whatever but here you can just you can just go for it on your backwash yeah. and then you can yeah. you can just add these things afterwards <laughs> And, and does it depend on the type of paper? So if you were using a, a very textured paper, would it be more difficult then? Yeah, slightly more difficult. If you're using a smooth, hot press paper, it's easily it's easier to come off. I'm using actually a, a rough paper and it's still coming off. Right. Uh, but one thing to bear in mind though, is the type of paint that you use. Um, if it's a staining colors, it may be slightly more difficult to lift. If it's non-staining, uh, like a ultramarine blue, it's easier to, 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 to lift off. So I did a comparison here. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, so all the different colors that I tried, ultramarine blue, this is ultramarine blue, um, two layers of it. This is turquoise blue, um, turquoise blue, two layers, Bernciana, Bernciana, two layers. Um, Cadmium red light, set green lavender, permanent alizarin crim crimson, pyrrol orange, and cobalt turquoise. And you can see the they all come off slightly differently. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those staining colors, you see the turquoise color, the set green, uh, the cobalt colors, cadmiums as well, even alizarin crimson doesn't come off as cleanly as the ultramarine blue. One. Um, even lavender, which is a, quite an opaque colors. Usually, I, I find that opaque colors and staining colors, it's harder to uh, lift off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's that's a good example for all of you watching this show. Actually, um, you know, to, to do some experiments with a new technique, and just yeah. to because it'll be different for everybody on how you want to apply those things if you want to apply them at all but at least give it a go and have some experiments and use your your standard paints your go-to paints that you use and 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 do something a little bit like that like marvin's done with it in your sketchbook or whatever and it's a good resource then that you can come back to if you want to use those uh later no thank you marvin that was a really great technique thank you for... uh, one, one word yeah. of caution though um John said earlier that it's it's my favorite technique, but it's it's actually not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's a technique to have, it's very handy to fix uh, minor mistakes or to you know to lift off certain colors for for textures and like what I've shown earlier. But one word of caution is that you try not to do it on a large area because even though it can clean off quite a bit, if you yeah. try to clean off the whole lot. This area, the whole lot of I, I don't think it, it will work. It will still it may end up looking muddy and things, but it's for small little areas should be fine. Okay, okay, that's that's a good tip. So yes, sorry I I, I inserted that. I thought it would sound more dramatic, but obviously it wasn't your <laughs> favorite tip. But it was a good tip nonetheless. So thank you yes, for sharing yes, that. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I can't wait for the workshop webinar this Thursday. And thank you for joining us for our first live show. This is a bit shorter today. It's just a kickoff show for the new year. Um, obviously, be getting into the regular pattern from next week. And starting with the workshop, obviously, today. Um, we've got a couple of questions, actually. So Susie said, does it damage the paper? Can you can you put more washers on afterwards? Yeah, so that's really a good question. Um, what it does, it if you scrub it very gently, uh, I don't think it will damage the paper a lot. But for staining color, sometimes you need to rub slightly harder and a, a few more times. And that might actually damage the sizing of the paper. So I've experienced it before when I scrub it off and try to apply another layer of paint. It doesn't uh, get absorbed uh, as much. It's kind of like the paper is damaged and yeah, it, it may happen. So just be careful. Okay, okay, good. Uh... Wise words. Well done, Susie. Another good tip. And how's your how's your lounge looking, Susie? <laughs> Love that picture of your lounge. Um, now, uh, again, thank you for joining us. Uh, great kickoff show for 2022. And obviously, we've got Marvin back in a few days time for the kickoff workshop as well. And I'm sure you'll agree we've got an action packed year ahead of us. I'm really pleased that you're along for the ride. So thank you very much. As always, if you're a patron and want to drop me a note directly, you can do so via the Patreon app uh, and if you want to catch up on any of the hundreds and hundreds of hours of live art shows with almost 100 international professional artists believe it or not um, simply visit our video library on our website marvin thank you again for joining me today for our kickoff show it's been lovely to have you here uh, really looking forward to the workshop later this week so thank you thanks marvin welcome john thanks thank you and goodbye, everyone. I can't finish uh, first without giving a big round of applause. So let's just have a big round of applause to all of us. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye.